Good morning. Almost afternoon. <laughs> A couple minutes. I got it right this time. Um, happy Sunday. I pray that you are all having an amazing morning so far. I pray that God woke you up with a great joy and that you gave thanks to him for waking you up because that means you have he still has purpose in you amen um i pray that this word would be of great edification to you because it is something that is a little bit difficult to swallow it's something that is a little bit difficult to um to think about because it is something that we need to know and it is the reason why god um has not has not placed us in a place where he wants us to be amen because there are things that he wants us to change still right amen so today's uh sunday sermon it is god will expose us that's right us as believers unbelievers any type of people right if we want to abide by what God has for us in our lives. If we want our blessings and we want the things that God, you know, allows us to have every single day, God will expose us. He exposes us, you know, at first he'll do it, you know, in a way with, you know, with us and in private and in a relationship with him because we're supposed to, as his believers, have a relationship first because the word says to love God above all things right and to seek his righteousness and everything else his kingdom and his righteousness and everything else will be added on so god will allow us to know the things that we are doing incorrectly or not you know in obedience to him or in the path of that he wants us to be for our purpose privately first but when we're not listening or hearing that small voice of god that's when he'll literally expose us. He will bring out to the light what is in the, you know, he'll bring out in, to the light what is in the darkness, you know? And I want to also keep it clear that God is always still God. And that even if he does this, he doesn't do it for your bad because everything that he is doing is for your good, right? Right. As we always talk about Jeremiah 29, 11, that he knows the plans that he has for us is for hope, for good, for power, you know, for love and all of these things that he wants for us. Amen. So he does these things so that we can abide by and go through the, the path that he wants us to go through. Right. So I'm going to read the word in first Corinthians four, five, and it is read in the name of the father, the son, and the Holy spirit. It says, therefore judge nothing before the appointed time, wait until the Lord comes. He will bring to the light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of the heart. At that time, each will receive their praise from God. Amen. So at that time when he does so, and we take it in a way that gives God glory, We'll receive our praise from God, meaning we will receive our blessing. Amen. And it is not because he wants to, you know, punish us or do those things, you know, because our punishment are our own from the sins that we commit from the consequences of our sins. Right. Amen. It is not, you know, God is a God of love. And yes, even though God is consuming fire and he does things on purpose in order for us to be able to come to the light and come back to him. God is a God of love. He is love. God is love. So there is no way that there is any evil within God. So everything that he does is with love. So. See, the thing is that there's a difference between a mistake and a lifestyle of sin. And God knows that. Right. Which is why he says that the word says that if we're lukewarm, that he vomits us out. But if we're cold, we're cold. And that means that we have no knowledge of what we're doing incorrectly. But when we're hot, we're hot. And we have the knowledge of what we're doing incorrectly. And we're on God's side and in obedience to God. Right? And we have to allow ourselves to know these things. We have to allow ourselves to ask God for discernment of what we're reading in the word. Of what he wants us to know. Right? Why is he exposing these things and coming about the way that they're coming about in our lives? On purpose. God does not do anything by accident. There is no coincidence with God. God has a timing and everyone on purpose. He has a purpose for us on purpose. He literally planned our steps before we were in our mother's wombs. And then when we were in our mother's wombs, we came up with a purpose. If you have a heartbeat today, which is what I read today, then there is a purpose. 
you still have a purpose in Christ. When I'm praying past images, no. God will not judge us of our past because the word says that he gives us mercies every day, okay? We are the ones that carry our own judgment and our own path, you know, and our own past. God allows us to see those things and exposes that in our minds so that we can be able to ask forgiveness for ourselves because forgiveness is for us. Forgiveness is not for anybody else, right? So we're asking God for forgiveness for ourselves. And if those things are coming into your mind, then that's probably something that you have to ask God for forgiveness and ask him to give you discernment on how to change it and how to go about in your life so that you can carry on his purpose. Right? Because we don't want those things that are in our past to come to the light and not only to the light, but to go into our generation, to our children, their children, our, you know, grandchildren, our great great grandchildren, and all of those things. We don't want that. Right? Amen. That's why God will expose us. But let me keep this clear. For all of those naysayers and those people who, you know, may talk about the sins that we commit, even as believers, because we're going to have those people, right? For all of those things that are going to come to us, our judgment, that's why it says, do not, do not pass judgment before the appointed time, especially if you're an unbeliever, even if you're a believer that has any type of judgment in your mind, instead of love for that person, you should never pass judgment before the appointed time of God, because God will expose us, but he will also expose you for judging the person that has been exposed. He will judge you too. You will have your consequence according to whatever you're doing as well. Or whatever you're saying about that person. See, because for every Ahab and Jezebel, there's an Elijah and Elisha. For every Goliath, there's a David. And believe me, that everything that, you know, tries to come that is evil, God will turn it for his glory. I promise you that. So if God is exposing us, we have to ask God for discernment and ask God why he's doing this. Ask God to allow us to know the things that he wants us to do next in our lives so that we can not only be forgiven by him, you know, and be redeemed, but forgiven by ourselves and feel the redemption of Christ because Jesus Christ already died on the cross for us. He already did that. He gave us his grace. God gives us his mercy every day. If you're alive today, you're welcome. God bless you. If you're alive today, then he already gave you purpose. Your purpose is still to be carried on. He just wants you to know that those things that he is exposing in your life, whether it be in the darkness with yourself, in your dreams, in your prayers, or out in the open in public, Right? It's not for us to go and feel embarrassed or feel bad because when we have that connection with God, when we are seeking the kingdom and the righteousness and everything else will be added on, that's when God will, you know, will feel, okay, God, this is something that you want us to change. This is something that you want me to do so that I can be what you want me to be, so that I can have my blessing, so that I am able to do the things that you have called me to do for your glory. So that my children can have the legacy that you're trying to leave to my household. Because if this doesn't happen, then we're not going to be able to have this. Right? Amen. And the word says in James 4, 7, it says, submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So if there's a sin that you have continu continuously committed and you know that you want to, you know, God has exposed you and it's very difficult for you. Ask God to help you to get out of that, to give you 100% true redemption. Bind it up and cast it out in the name of Jesus. Fast, pray because we're supposed to be praying without ceasing so that we can be able to do and abide by the purpose that God has for us in our lives. Because he wants us to have that purpose, right? So that we can then know that whatever was intended for our harm, God will change it for his glory and give us the blessing, right? Because that's what he wants from us. That's what he wants for us. 
He doesn't want us, you know, like I said, Jeremiah 29, 11 is the biggest thing that, you know, he knows our plan. He knows the plan that he already made for you specifically for me. When he created me in my mother's womb, he had a plan. The things that has happened accordingly was because I fell out of that plan of God. And he exposed me. Thank God he did. Because then I wouldn't be able to be here today speaking of this word. And I give God all the glory and all the honor that he gave me the opportunity to be here to say this. And I don't care. Like I said, for every Jezebel and Ahab, there is an Elijah and Elisha. And for every Goliath, there is a David. So I don't care if there is someone speaking upon who I was in my past because I don't live there anymore. Because God gave me a new day, a new mercy, and he gave me grace to be able to continue on his purpose, even if I fell, even if I continue to fall. Because that's why Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and me. And I'm not saying that sin is okay to commit. That's not what I'm saying. Because we have to learn that he will expose us for the sin that we continue to commit, even though we know that we're not supposed to be doing so. He's going to expose us. Right? But I am saying that when we do fall without wanting to fall, because God knows our hearts, that he's going to help us become redeemed. And he's going to help us with that exposure, be who he wanted us to be from the beginning. And that's what this word is all about. We have to ask God for discernment. You know, why is it that we're living under this consuming fire of, of God? Why is he exposing us? Why is he allowing us, you know, to feel this way and feel ashamed sometimes? You know, because it took for the prophet to go to David, for David to even know that he did anything wrong. You know, even though God may have exposed it to him in his intimacy with God. Because David, you know, in the word, it says God, you know, that David was the man who was closest to God's heart. And if you feel like you're that way as well, you know, and I believe it because I believe that David is not going to be the only person you know, and you're really trying hard, you know, maybe now it's time for you to pray even harder to God and speak to him and ask for discernment fast because fasting and prayer will always work because Jesus had to do it for 40 days and 40 nights before he even started his ministry. Imagine <laughs> what makes you think that we don't have to do that, right? So God will expose us but it is for our good. It is not to harm us. It is not to bring us down. It is not for judgment. It is not for those naysayers to say whatever they want to say because we all make mistakes. That's why Jesus Christ died on the cross for us. And even though God will expose us, he does it so that we can get back up and abide by his purpose and his word so that he can have the glory and we can have our blessings. So I want to leave you with this Bible verse because whatever the devil is trying or anyone else in your life that is negative in your life, you know, and we're supposed to pray for our enemies. The word says it, pray for them and, and, and love your neighbor as you do yourself. So your enemy is still your neighbor. Amen. So the word says in Genesis 50, 20, it says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Glory to God. So whatever may have happened in your life that has been exposed and you think that it was intended for harm, he intended it for you to be able to speak to those lives who are lost. In the name of Jesus. He intended it for the people to be saved that are still lost in the name of Jesus. You were exposed on purpose so that your purpose can be carried out the correct way in the name of Jesus. So just know that God is still, still with you. And he will always 
be with you because he will never leave you nor he will forsake you. He chose you for a reason. And you need to know that he still loves you regardless if you fall or not, regardless if you were exposed in public or not. He still loves you and your purpose is still to be carried out because it was from your mother's womb that he gave you that purpose. So for every Jezebel, for every Ahab, there's an Elijah and an Elisha. And for every Goliath, there is a David. And there is one in the chosen people that, in the chosen person that is you in Christ. All we have to do is keep on that good fight and that race. Because God has a greater plan for you than you have for yourself. We'll continue to make mistakes. We're never going to be perfect until we go into the glory with God. Amen in heaven. But it is the way that we continue on after we fall that matters, right? Because the difference between a mistake and a lifestyle of sin is upon you. Amen? Don't allow anybody else to make you feel less than when God has already given you a purpose. And mistakes are mistakes. You know, and that's something that God will see because of your heart but a lifestyle of sin is something different and he still will expose you regardless of what you choose to do amen I pray that in the name of Jesus that this message was of great edification and I'm gonna pray because people of God he's exposing us for a reason he wants us to take back the body of Christ. He wants us to do what we were called to do. To not allow what, you know, any of these people, the naysayers, the Jezebels, the, the Ahabs, you know, the, the Goliaths are trying to do. Because he has called us to be an Elijah. An Elisha. He called us to be a David. He called us to be like Jesus. Jesus said, we will do greater in the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you, Father, for using this humble servant of yours to give this word to your people. Father God, in this moment, I ask you to expose anything that is not of you in my life and their lives, Father God, so that we can be on the straight and narrow path to you and be able to abide by your word and do the purpose that you have given us even from before that we were in our mother's womb and when we were formed in our mother's womb, Father God. Because if we are here today with a heartbeat and a pulse, Father God, there's still a purpose that needs to be carried out for your glory in our lives. We thank you, Father God, for this word, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for your love that is unconditional no matter how many times we fall, Father God. Allow the people, Father God, to know that we have to continue to pray and we have to fast because we have to pray without ceasing for us to find redemption in you, Christ, so that we can live the life that we were supposed to live that you have already planned for us. We thank you for your mercy and your grace that is undeserving to us that you give to us anyway, Father God. Thank you once again, because all the glory and all the honor goes to you, always to you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I pray that this word was of great edification to you all. And I pray that if you don't have your purpose in, in, in God, just know that if you're still alive, there's still a purpose, even for love, even for, for, for hugging someone, to love someone, you know, and I know that we're in COVID times, you know, even if you have to hug the person that's next to you, your family member, there's still a purpose in everything that, that we're doing because God called us for, for something greater than ourselves. He, he said that we were going to do greater than, than Jesus. Amen. So hold on to, to that promise, even after the exposure. God bless you, and I pray that you have an amazing um, Sunday, and I'll see you tomorrow. Amen. <laughs>